Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this video, we will discuss some examples of the DC machines. So, first example that is shown over here: a separately excited DC motor with a constant field current and a constant speed of 3000 rpm consumes 15 kilowatt at the terminal voltage of 125 volt. If armature resistance is 0.02 ohm, we are supposed to determine armature current back EMF. power developed at the armature or power converted into the mechanical form and the torque so the first step to look at this problem is to draw its circuit diagram so we are given a separately excited dc motor so here you can see the circuit diagram for that one a field winding and over here is the armature winding two windings are there and both are connected with the separate supply the supply for the field winding is vf and supply for the armature winding is this one and it is given to us that uh, that armature voltage is 125 volt that you can see from here so first of all draw the circuit diagram mark all the uh, parameters which are given to you so armature resistance that is 0.02 ohm so that is marked over here and uh, um, you can see this inductance over here but we will not be considering it in the analysis because in the dc the inductor works as the um, short circuit so uh, we will not be um, requiring any information of uh, uh, this inductor part so we will neglect this inductance in our uh, analysis because um, this inductor is short circuit so we will assume that there is no voltage across this inductor Okay, so now we want to um, determine the um, parameters: armature, current, back EMF, power developed, and torque. So first step is to draw the equivalent circuit diagram, and uh, next we will start the analysis. So first of all, we are going to uh, determine what's the armature current. So armature current can be determined by looking at the power at this point, and uh, uh, we are given that the machine is consuming 15 kilowatt at the input terminal. so um the p in divided by the armature voltage will give us the armature current the current that is injected in the machine so that can be determined as p in by va so 15 kilowatt is the input power and 125 uh, volt is applied at the machine terminal over here so 120 ampere will be the current that is going to flow uh, in this machine so um, um the armature current we have determined it's 120 ampere Okay, now uh, next step is to uh, look at the uh, back EMF that will be there over here when you are operating this machine under this condition. So first step is to write down the voltage equation, and that you can see over here that this terminal voltage V T must be equal to the voltage drop across this resistance plus this back EMF. So V T I A R A and the uh, back EMF. So this terminal voltage must be equal to this resistive voltage drop and the back EMF. so if you rearrange this equation you can write down the equation for the back emf in your machine that is eb over here so that is equal to vt minus ira and you know about the mm, terminal voltage you know about the uh, current and you know about the armature resistance that is given to you so plugging in the values the back emf is, is 122.6 volt so um, the voltage over here is 122.6 volt and the terminal voltage is 125 volt so here you can see that terminal voltage is greater than the back emf that's why it is going to work as a motor and the power is going to flow into the um, uh, machine it will work as a, a motor right okay now uh, the power um, that you are injecting into your machine from here is that we have calculated uh, that is given to us it is 15 kilowatt out of this some of the power is going to be uh, lost across this resistance that will be dissipated in the form of heat so that is calculated as ia square into ra the rest of the power will be available for conversion into the mechanical form and we call it the electromagnetic power and how we can determine that one the current that is going to flow over here is ia and the voltage across uh, this um, uh, part is the back emf we are going to assume so eb into ia will give us the power that is converted into the mechanical form so that you can see the mechanical power that is equal to uh, eb into ib that uh, can be determined now 
uh, EB is 122.6 volt and IB is 120 ampere. So the power that is converted into mechanical form is 14.7 kilowatt. So uh, out of 15 kilowatt that we injected in this machine uh, over here, um, the power that is converted into the mechanical form is 14.7 kilowatt. Okay, now we can um, uh, determine the torque, the torque induced um, uh, over here or the electromagnetic torque, the torque because of the electromagnetic power. So that will be equal to electromagnetic power divided by the speed of your machine. And the speed um, is given to us in terms of RPM that you can see over here 3000 RPM. Um, so this is in radian per second. So the torque can be developed, uh, can be measured by taking or dividing the electromagnetic power with the speed in radian per second. So our power that is converted into the mechanical form is this one, 14.7 into 10 raised power 3 and um, this is the RPM. So 2 pi by 60 is the conversion, conversion factor to convert this 3000 RPM into radian per second. So um, the resultant torque is 46.82 Newton meter. So what are the steps to um, calculate this one? The first step is to draw the equivalent circuit diagram. And then in most of the cases, you will have to determine the back EMF. Back EMF plays a very important role um, in the operation of the machine. Whenever you are going to apply the load on the machine, this back EMF is going to adjust itself to a new value such that the new current is established and machine uh, delivers um, um, a new uh, required power or operates at the new um, speed. So with the passage of time during this tutorial, you will see that that back EMF plays a very important role in the operation of the machine and it depends upon as we have discussed in the uh, theory lecture that back EMF is equal to K times flux into omega. It depends upon the flux, it depends upon the speed and can also be written as somewhat like that KB into IF into Omega, it can be controlled by controlling the mm, field current in this circuit IF and the speed of the uh, machine. Both are going to affect this back EMF. So we will discuss um, uh, them more in detail in the upcoming example. Okay, now let's look at the second example. A 110 volt DC shunt motor runs at the speed of 1200 RPM under no load condition drawing an armature current of 1.25 ampere. So that is the information at the no load. At rated load the speed drops to 1120 RPM. So determine the input power at no load and the rated load if armature resistance is 0.25 ohm and the field resistance is 57.5 ohm. Okay. So again the first step is to draw the equivalent circuit. So we are supposed to draw the equivalent circuit of the shunt motor. Okay. So shunt motor your field winding let us suppose this one is F1 and F2 these are the terminals of the field winding and uh, these are the terminals of the armature winding they are connected in parallel. So the machine in which these two are connected in parallel is called the um, shunt machine or the self excited machine and the supply voltage is 110 volt that you are going to apply to this machine. So our major resistance is 0.25 ohm and the field resistance is 57.5 ohm. And we need to determine um, the input power at no load and the rotated load condition, rotated, uh, rated load condition. So um, once you apply this supply to this uh, machine, the voltage across your armature and the voltage across your field both will be same because they are in parallel and that will be equal to the terminal voltage. And as we have already discussed this inductance LF is not going to play any role, no voltage drop across it. So we will simply calculate the current in this field winding by mm, dividing this terminal voltage that is the voltage across this winding by the resistance of this branch and that is 57.5 ohm. So that you can see VT over RF. So 110 volt is you are going to apply 57.5 ohm. So current in the uh, field winding will be uh, 1.913 ampere. That is the current in this. Okay. Now it is a shunt machine. So this supply current that is IS that will be the sum of this armature current and the field current over here. So um, you can write down the equation that IS is equal to IF plus IA. So 
and the field current is 1.913 ampere and the armature current armature current is given to you here that no load your machine is taking only 1.25 ampere so the field current 1.913 ampere and the armature current 1.25 ampere so the total current that will be drawn by your machine at the no load state is 3.163 ampere so this current is 3.163 ampere that is being drawn from the source which is at 110 volt okay now uh, what's the no load power no load power can be easily um, calculated uh, by looking at the input current and the input voltage the applied voltage because you know that the power is equal to the product of the voltage and the current so the voltage that you are going to apply is 110 volt and the current in the machine from this supply is 3.163 ampere so the power that is injected into this machine that is equal to 347.9 watt the power taken by this machine and uh, please note that this is at the no load state we have still not applied any load uh, mechanical load over the um, shaft of this machine it is rotating with speed omega the induced torque is in this direction when you will apply the load torque so that will be acting in the opposite direction to the induced torque so um, at the moment without the load torque um, what is the power that is being drawn that is 347.9 watt some of the power uh, this power is basically required to run the machine itself to overcome its sound and its, uh, its sound losses so um, this is the power required at the no load okay now let's look at the back emf at the no load state because when you will apply the load your terminal voltages are to be kept constant uh, uh, this this one is to be kept constant so this back emf must change so that the current that is injected into the machine is updated and the torque induced is updated because you know that from theory class the torque induced is equal to kt ia into if so the change of current will bring the change in the um, torque so as our field is connected across the constant voltage so it is going uh, the field current is going to remain constant the armature current will change as the load will change because more induced torque will be required right and that armature current can only change in this uh, loop if your back emf is going to reduce so now let's look at it what will be the back emf at the no load state so the back emf is terminal voltage minus i a r a neglecting the voltage drop over here no change over here the, the voltage drop over here will be only effective during the um, transitions um, during the change of the current so at the moment I am going to assume that the constant current is going to flow and this part is not participating in any voltage drop over here okay so now if we plug in the values and so uh, you can see 110 volt armature current is 1.25 ampere that is given to us and the armature resistance is 0.25 ohm so the back emf at this point is 109.7 volt so this back emf is 109.7 volt under the no load conditions okay now let's calculate the power the power that is converted into the mechanical form under the no load state as there is no load so um, this power is not for the load but for the machine itself M machine has the weight the armature has the weight it has the inertia so um, some power is required to run that machine itself so that will be equal to this voltage eb and the current in this branch and the current in this branch that you can see over here is ia the armature current at the no load so the product of these two will give you the power 109.7 volt into 1.25 so 137.1 watt is the power that is required by the machine to run itself okay as i told you earlier that once you are going to change the uh, load the back emf is going to change because if um, it is not going to change the current cannot be changed over here so to change the current in the armature this back emf must change and as we will be increasing the load on that on the machine so um, that requires the increase of the current so this back emf will be going down so um, the back emf as we have already discussed in the three class that is proportional to the flux and the speed so at no load the back emf will be given by this expression it can be written in terms of the field current because flux is proportional to the field current and um, this is the speed in radian per second and this is the speed in rpm so by a constant factor we can convert from radian per second to the rpm so that is accommodated in this one some constant in the new constant 
So um, constant into constant, it will be a new constant. So I have represented it with k1. So this equation can be written as k1 if into n l no load speed that is in the RPM. So similarly, if we consider the full load, so at full load, um, um, your back EMF can be represented like that k flux at full load, speed at full load. So this can be written as k1 if speed at full load. So if we um, take the ratio of these two equations that is shown over here, that EBNL over EBFL, that will be simply equal to no load speed divided by the full load speed. So if you know the information um, um, from, of, of this equation, that is you know the, about the no load back EMF and you know about the uh, no load um, speed of your machine and if you calculate uh, and you know the full load speed or any three parameters which are known, you can find out the fourth one. So we are basically interested in calculating the back EMF at the full loads and that will be given by this expression that this ratio of the speeds full load and the no load into the um, back EMF at the no load. So we have calculated the um, back EMF at the no load that is 109.7 volt and what is the um, speed? The speed that is um, uh, given to us over here, here you can see the no load speed is 1200 rpm and the full load speed is um, 1120 rpm, right. So using these values over here that um, 1120 is the uh, full load speed and the no load speed is 1200 rpm. So your new induced back EMF will be 102.4 volt. So um, the back EMF over here in this circuit is going to uh, reduce this back EMF. At no load it is it was 109.7 volt. At full load it is 102.4 volt. Terminal voltage is 110 volt. So the current in this branch will be changing because of the uh, reduction in the um, back EMF over here, right? Okay, now um, what will be the change in the current that you can uh, determine with the help of the generator equation? You know that the terminal voltage is equal to IARA plus back EMF. So now you know the back EMF at the full load. So you can find out the full load armature current that is equal to VT minus back EMF at full load divided by RA, the armature resistance. So just plug in the value. This is the voltage. Uh, this is the back EMF at the full load armature resistance. So 30.4 ampere is the uh, full load current of the armature. So the armature current has changed from 1.25 ampere to 30.4 ampere at the voltage of uh, 110 volt, right? So by applying the load, the armature current increases and how it is going to increase that your back EMF is going to decrease. That was basically opposing the current in the armature. So um, you can observe the increase in the armature current over here. Now you can uh, work out the full load power, the power converted into the mechanical form that will be equal to this back EMF multiplied by the current in this IA that is the full load armature current. So here you can see that that mechanical power is EB into armature current full load. So 1024 volt that we calculated over here and 30.4 ampere. So the new power is um, 3110 watt that is 3 0.110 kilowatt. So for kilowatt you will have to divide it by the thousand. So if you divide it by the thousand you are going to get this factor and you can represent this power in the kilowatt. Okay now what will be the new supply current? The supply current over here. The field current has not changed because field resistance is fixed and the voltage across it is also fixed 110 volts. So there is no change in the field current. Our major current has changed. So the sum of these two current because the supply current is equal to the field current plus the armature current. So that you can determine over here that um, field current that is 1.913 ampere and the new armature current is 30.4. So your new supply current will be 32.31 ampere that will be drawn from the um, source. Right. So this is the new current over here. And um, now what will be the um, total input uh, power? on um, from the source um, at the full load condition so the voltage is 110 and the new supply current that is over here is 32.3 um, 1 ampere so taking the product of these two so the new input power is 3.55 uh, kilowatt so when you increase the load on your machine um, and to the required level so it is now going to draw 3.55 kilowatt from the source terminals and if you go back and look at over there, 
under no load state it was only drawing 347.9 watt so with the uh, application of the load the input power to the machine has increased it has adjusted its back emf and the armature current is set to a new value and supply current is set to a new value and machine is going to provide you the um, required speed and um, the torque and use for the load and the load torque is going to act in the opposite direction a mechanical load is considered to be um, connected over here so um, that's all from this video and in the next tutorial we will discuss about um, uh, more in-depth analysis examples for the DC machines thank you very much